Well, it's a brand new day. I guess we've got to leave and find Kim. Hope, hopefully he's not been waiting that long. Yep, there he is. It's been about... <coughs> Excuse me. It's been about, what, eight minutes? Good morning, Kim. I need to talk to you about the bullet, but it doesn't look like you want to talk to me. So I'm thinking let's go on to the bullet then. The bullet is still Aha. safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Yep. Well, Kim, I think I know where this came from as I dangle the bag thoughtfully in my hand. Okay. And? The shot probably came from a Bell McGrath rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Radasho, really. Why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking. But the laws prohibiting the use of breech loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective, from what I've seen. Okay. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons. But they realize it's worth it in the end. Worth what? Well, yeah, make you consider every shot. I like it. I guess I do because I've only shot three people. Well, I've only killed three people. I could have shot a lot of people and just not killed them. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to a firearm that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. Yeah, you've got a point. But back to the investigation. So it could have been... Which could have been the victim mixed up with some foreign guerrilla fighters. Well, yeah, obviously, because he's the guy, isn't he? Let's find out. Next step, finding the gun itself. Okay, so let's put the bullet away. Right, okay, we need to go back to your car. You've brought your car back with you, haven't you? But first, on the way there, we should inspect the trap. Okay. Where is the Feld building? Why can I quick travel here now? It didn't feel like I could earlier. Okay, which one is the Feld building? Is it over here? Yeah. Let's bus stop. Let's get over there, please. Fine, over here. Okay, so. Have I been up this way? This doesn't look familiar. Oh dear, is it a brand new area? No, I think I have come this way. No, I haven't. Ooh. That has been recently discarded. It, smell it still smells of fine oil. What's that? Stick on it. Rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. The button before you house the engine must have been a big one. What is this place? The chain trails off into the ocean for who knows where. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing, anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. What What does it service? The washerwoman mentioned a depot at the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the coast. Oh, okay. This might be it. Walk away, then. I've definitely not looked in this area. Oops. How did I miss an entire area? What a fool I am. 
What a fool. Oh. I got so I got another shirt. Oof, oof, oof. The boardwalk rises to your south. It casts its long shadow over you. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> We've got a trap here. We found one of them There's at least. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Okay, let's have a look around first. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. For something, huh? The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Uh, well, I'm I'm bundled up, you know. Let's reach Locusts for the trap. are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Ah. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. The lieutenant grins mirthlessly. Yeah, it'll be the next one, surely. Surely. Anyway, the air is nice and fresh here. He repeats and looks at the sea, then at you putting the trap back on the ground. Ah, oh, Kim. We have a look. Okay, so we've done the Land's End one. I think we've done the, the, the Feld building. I think that, that was one of those buildings that Man and Son were looking at. And this need, should probably be the end because it's like Land's End. What else would you call it? What's this? Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio tower relay. And this ladder is too rusty to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. Okay, oh, there's a box here as well. What is this? Oh, a scarf. A scented scarf. What does it smell like? It can't smell nice. With how this light springtime scarf smells like men's cologne mixed with cheap laundry detergent. Someone must have left it behind, probably from a date. Wear it if you want to delude yourself that spring has arrived. It's definitely not spring, so we'll leave it for now. The lit tiny inlets there off in the far distance where the posts trail towards. Okay. Let's head back then. That's the one that we've done. Can I get back round? No, I've got to go the long way round, of course. Okay, so let's go down the little alleyway. Oh. See if there's anything actually over here. This is the boardwalk. Well, where am I heading? No, just head down, please. It doesn't like me moving some directions, you know. Nope, I've gone the wrong way. Where are those guys gone? Weird. Look at this road. This road is just a terrible road. Okay, okay. So... Where was Morel and his guy? I thought it was in this direction somewhere, but I can't see them. 
Was that door wide open earlier? I don't think it was. Hmm. Oh dear, this is this is terrible. I'm just like, oh. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. Yeah, what happened here? In this yard? The lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of grey swallows take off into the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Yeah, how long ago was your calculus? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure or cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. Hmm, what's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen to gang violence. Or has become inhospitable in some other way. So this part of the coast is that? Practically. It's not an official term in many ways, but look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drums. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. Why would he choose to? Yeah, well, at least he left some old music behind. Yes, and you picked it up as part of the Jamrock Shuffle. He gives you a weary smile. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland, at least in this phase of the investigation. Ah. That's not what I was looking for anyway. I was, I'm looking for where morale was. I just, I need, I need to start fiddling with some stuff. That sounded weird. I passed them. I thought it was on like the left hand side, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I might be wrong with where it actually was. Okay, so let's at least look at this one over here. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Yep, look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city hums in the east. The constant, distant song, louder on this part of the coast, nearer somehow, and there's that cold again, always the cold. Always, always shivers. Let's look for the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Ah. Uh. Another empty trap. Uh, yeah, how are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. <gasps> Always up for a good jog. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? True. You'd probably stay at the, the hostel. He smiles and raises his collar. It's windy. Yep, unfortunately, we made it all the way back and now we need to go out again. Let's zoom out a bit. Whoa. I didn't know you could zoom this far out. This is useful. Jeez. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the little fishing village. Where is the building? I could have sworn it was after, but I guess not. What's that up there? Nothing that I can even touch. Okay. Oh, this looks this looks promising. Maybe. Ah, oh, yep. There's there's the guy. Now was this the one that Dingy was looking at, or was this? This trap's not too hard to spot. Once you know what to look for, keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. Okay, look around. Behind you, 
A ruined residential building looms over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. They rustle confidentially, in tune with the pitter patter of the rain. Confidentially, I like that. Look for the reach for the tap. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Okay. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're done. His face is red from the cold sea air. He crunches to catch his bag, uh, breath. Bummer, it wasn't in here. I'm just glad we haven't found some poor cat trapped in one of these. True, true, true. So leave. So which one was that? Okay, so the one that Morale set up. We've got to find him again. Which I thought might have been that one, but apparently not. I will get there eventually. Let's just slowly jog. Ah, it's right here. <laughs> That's good. This is the last of the traps. The one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. Then let's look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite hiss and shake in the lazily falling rain. <gasps> It's good the cryptozoologists left. This isn't a very cozy place to stay night after night. I guess. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange, somehow. Do I? Reach for the trap, then. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Look closer. No locusts. <gasps> no locusts. No phasmid either, but still. Yeah, I don't want to immediately yell. I'll look closer still. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. Yeah, but what if it was the phasmid? What if it ate them and got out? Right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologists to figure out now. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops. He <laughs> adds for clarity. Let's leave then. So we need to go back to tell them, do we? Return to morale and the whirling with the news. Well, we're heading that way anyway. So let us... Let me see if I can finally get this to work. See, it... it what the hell? Will it work if I'm in the fishing village? Maybe. But I feel like I'm being gaslit by this game. <laughs> like it said I could I could do fast travel and the two times I've tried fast travel it's not let me. But then I'm sure I saw that you could fast travel. Yeah you can! What the hell? I guess it's just in certain areas. Which I guess makes sense, but still, that was rude. Right, okay, so let us, before we head into the whirling. Whoa, dudes, what the fuck are you doing with our car? Back off! Fuck, fuck the world? Fuck you guys. Piss something? Are you new guys, or are you the police guys? Hello? That's one brutal motor carriage. The man with uh, piss written on his back says, If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, Fuck the world. Can I just say I like the way that we've both like sort of gone to either side of them, so that if they try and run, like we can each grab one of them. A snazzy shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops' heads. Scary tribal shit. To be honest, I'm surprised nobody's stolen his car yet. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull values. Dudes, do you know we're here? <clears throat> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property, seriously. Oh, no, it's because Kim loves his car. I, um, 
It's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Is this sort of like Cindy, Cindy the Skull? So who are you guys? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Right, okay. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and On the contrary. You just want to be them and unfortunately are not. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls. Yet. Yet, okay. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Yeah, so do you guys know Cindy the Skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. Yeah, a true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. Do I know that name? I feel like I know that name. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He adds, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. Uh. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. So, I see your kids are into dance music. Oh man, yeah. We're not fucking kids, man. He exclaims and stops himself, possess, possess, processing the rest of your question. Be wary of the abyss. His blonde friend adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? It's a threat. An impotent threat of violence. I don't think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't fuck with me, boys. I'm one of those bad cops. <laughs> oh, come on, man. We're just talking here. Just words. Nothing wrong with that. Why do I keep... That was my choice to, like, threaten these teenagers. Like, seriously, why do I keep doing this? Yeah, no need to throw your authority in our faces. Yeah, I really shouldn't. You want to talk? Let's talk, boys. Ask them. He's eyes me or he liked how you decisively shut down a situation that could have turned. I don't think us. it would have been so. Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the unions themselves, of course. Of course. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. <laughs> Thank you for telling us that. Yeah, we are. Uh, the young man exchanges approving nods. So enough about this scullery then. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the murder? Murder? The man that was hanged? Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Also, he was hanged. Yeah, anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, duh. Duh. These perms don't know anything. Yeah. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? What are you talking about? Fucking philosophy, man. You can do aggressive shit with philosophy. Justify shit. I guess. So what's with your jackets then? What about them? Yeah, why does it have that written on your jacket? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. What? The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem. Not as they are. And, I guess, it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. What are you talking also, about? you've got to admit, it catches the eye. 
And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Uh, what? What I mean by this is, we are all pissed and that the world is inherently meaningless. Okay, and fuck the world? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... Blow up the lake? You get more fish in a shorter time. And, for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious sticking your dick into the void i feel like i've lost brain cells talking to you too hate to admit it but in a weird way he's got a point no he doesn't is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops definitely a coincidence coincidence your lack of imagination is baffling, but you do make up for it with, yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's never gonna happen, but I love the idea. <laughs> yeah, talking with you guys has definitely been something. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Okay, pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um... I need to report a dead body in the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Oh, an unidentified middle-aged man, hate, height. 150 over 70, 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he'd slipped, fell through the hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him. I should have found out his name first, shouldn't I? Any signs of violence? No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Mm, I found that he was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. Found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? Yes, it belonged to someone named Billy McJean from the Jamrock Public Library. Good. You have a lead? I do. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We we'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? You should connect me to the Jamrock Public Library first. I'm yeah. afraid that's closed. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. We should try again during the Yeah, hour. We, it's less than two hours. We can anything do else something detective? for now. Yep, I'm done with the radio. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see. No, thank you. Let me have a look. So yeah, need to find out about him, but let's head inside. Hello guys. Oh hey Morel, you're there. And so are you guys. Let's talk to these first. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on. Okay, you. okay. Hey, Lena. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. No, just doing my job, ma'am. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. 
The pin is an antique. Quite special. Oh, thank you. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels worn in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. That's all for now, then, ma'am. Let me have a look at it. Oh, that's cute. What's it look like on? Cool. But no, thank you for now. Can I talk to you now? <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He gives you a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. It's a good job that I am here to tell him some news on the traps. So I check them all. Good. Okay. And? And one of them was empty. Completely empty? The cryptozoologist's eyes go wide. Yep, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? Nope, unfortunately not. That's not ideal, but... Mm, the trap was the one at your campsite. Maybe this factors into it somehow. I definitely left that one stocked. Mm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Insel Indian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. I mean, I feel like it's because it was the last one that I checked, but maybe. Of course, more clever. Tim. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked up the locust and escaped. This is good news. They will have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reed. Yes, that's exactly what it is. What a death sentence of this phasmid. Of course. Be sarcastic. I wasn't! Hypothesis. You'd like to venture. Mine stands, okay? Fuck you, dude. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news, too. My gratitude and... The gratitude of the Société Cryptozoologique de Ravishaw is yours. I feel like if I didn't believe, I wouldn't have done the, t the task, you know? Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Who would steal locust? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The <laughs> lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Why does this develop an alternate alternative theory about the missing locust have a plus two for Kuno Zahooligan? <laughs> but you get a plus one because you're enthusiastic about Phasmid, so let's have a go. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Ah. Uh, Most likely the hands of a young person. Ah, uh, yes. And small enough to fit inside the trap. Too. You've got a point. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. Hmm. I think a little hooligan called Kuno may have stolen the locust. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? He's a hooligan. Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Well, I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. The link. Oh, oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Yes. I also miss Kim's great, great retort, which was delinquent, my favourite. It doesn't really sound like it's his favourite. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. He hasn't been particularly forthcoming before. He may well still be hiding something. After he's left, it's too late. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. 
I'd love to play suzerain tea, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this route. Hmm, I wonder whether he went back. So I'll get going and I will also talk to Geary. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. He looks really weird in that picture. Not in the picture, but there, it doesn't look like him. I mean, officers. Uh, yeah, you said rev that's got really nothing to do with anything. Okay. Ask Kuno and then take a look around the yard. Okay. Actually, I should do what I was going to plan to do, which is talk to these guys again. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he's really having trouble believing this shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, are we from the same police station? I gotta ask. I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Oh, okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Yep. Because I feel like that would bother you more than the, oh yeah, well I don't remember you from anywhere. Jean. He said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. No, he's go definitely a cop. cop. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, let's go then. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Let's do some more of the actual police stuff and talk to Kazje one more time. What did we actually need to talk to her about? Uh, we need to confront her with the Hardy story once more. Oh yeah, because of the, the shots, right? Is there a way? Oh, what am I doing? This window is pristine on the mm. inside, unlike the one... Cause that's why it got shot then, okay? Just leave the door, come on, okay. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. Let's try looking her in the eye. She looks back. Time moves slowly. No. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. What are you talking about, guy? We will see through deceits. You are shielded. You are wise. I feel like you're not shielding me. We keep coming back because... We keep not getting her whole story. You are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that line her limbs, just below the silver jumpsuit. Okay. Miss Aranye Disco Dancer, you want to put your hand on her back and feel it. Up. Okay, avert your eyes. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 .2 seconds. Okay. So the Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. You don't look surprised you were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Why did you? This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. 
I'm not apologizing for anything. I've got nothing to apologize for. Is it? Something is off here. Shush. I can't hear what she's saying. Guys, calm down. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Not at the shit I'd gotten into. Hmm. That's not enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. She reaches for new cigarettes. Briefly glance it over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon. Grey and pale violet in the morning light. What lies beyond it? The pale, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Arenye, the old, old world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the mole intern? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights the cigarettes. What's going on? What did you do? Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you fire my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. Hmm. So why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth. Uh, I, I don't like how... Um, or because she thought of the lies so often, she's like, if they say this, this is what I'll say. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. Every, why is everybody just, like, doing stuff? Yeah, so you would have us believe. But you're not. You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off. And that little fucker threw stones at him. Why not just move? He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Well, you think maybe it could have been a lie? I don't necessarily believe you there. Because, what did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Orania. Look, if I'm thinking about making a deal with you about, you know, letting you go, like not putting your name down, you need to give me something here. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. Oh, that's not bad. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. And then they went after you. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. Why do you need that, Kim? The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scott conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. But she really destroyed them. She still feels it. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scott and their friends in the MI. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, 
You don't have allies. You're radioactive. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that people have done much worse than that, but that doesn't really matter to them. Yeah, that's a lot of shit you've got yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting... I mean, most of the people who would have lost their jobs would have been the ordinary people. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. Oh, that's so kind. I don't necessarily believe you. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. What did you do? I... One of them killed themselves because of me. That's not easy to deal with. How do you deal with anything? It's all just... How do you do it? <laughs> I feel like I don't either. There you have it. The way of the warrior. She is almost devoured the cigarette. She just licked and looks at it sadly. Okay, so what happened here the night he died? We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. What happened exactly? Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could. Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. You were right. He did enjoy the moment of his death. Yeah, we're not going to mention that. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. She just stands there, her arms at her side. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. Okay. So I guess I am sorry for what happened, that this happened to you. Nobody should, you know, see that. So am I. She looks down. His cigarette has singed her fingers. She throws it away and immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. Uh, yeah, what he said. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? You're probably drugged. Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Yeah, Titus said you looked pretty high. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Before or after you got, uh, he got shot? Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. And what did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up through the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor. Slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room. Into the hallway. Down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them. And out into the streets where it's dark and people move. To the lorries at the intersection as far as you can. 
Yeah, why didn't you run away from here? As a matter of fact, why are you still here now? I already ran. I ran from an entire Isuma. There is... I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. <sighs> okay, did you hear a gunshot when it happened? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. And what happened after you went downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? Of the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys? I thought the Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy Boy? Why not? Okay, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. But I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. That's what she does, you know. Take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower. To keep him upright. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what it does. Yeah. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. I just, I don't understand why she doesn't want anybody to know that she's here. But she also wasn't willing to go along with the story. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. We carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. And have you seen her since? Where is she now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Yeah, we will definitely be doing that. Interesting. Why did this room go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. Did you kill Laylee? No, of course she didn't. Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarettes. So they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. Yeah, it probably didn't, but we don't know for sure. Or, I don't know anything anymore. All I do is wait here. We can't go after Lewis Cap. Not yet. There are other, saner leads. Yeah. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. So when was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. 
Big drag. Wait, those two are the latest. We should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. Do I ask her this? I don't know whether I should. Did you kill Lele? What? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. Because I feel like you've cornered yourself more. You could have like stuck to their rape story, but you didn't. I feel like you're trying to work two sides. You wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. Hmm. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around, close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Now, you guys suddenly have theories pouring out, when they're obviously just stabs in the dark. Uh, yeah, has he got a weapon nearby? Did you see that? No. I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had a stupid armory. Okay, well, the bullet in his head, it was jacketed, military grade. Who else here has a military rifle? His friends have rifles. Maybe those psychos did it. Coalition military had rifles. I'm not a munitions expert, and I did not shoot him. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Like what? I think we're done here. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um, the lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or maybe you should take her to the station for safekeeping. She lied to you. And she's a flight risk. I feel like if she would have run, she would have run already. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. No, I... She doesn't need this police brutality. I feel like she maybe does, but I also feel like she's telling the truth. So we'll probably keep her here because I feel like if she would have run, she would have done it already. Multiface, I'm beginning to doubt your judgment. Are you sure you're not sleeping on the post? You have to wake this one up with force if you want to continue pushing her. Multi-face. Is that what he looks like? Let's try waking him up. But we are awake, sire. Yeah, he is multi-face. coming with sordid details women usually conceal. Most shocking details of the sexual kind. We are a bulwark, unbreached. Yeah, but she's truth-trickling us. She's trying to get away with saying the least amount of things that she can say to get us off her back. So while I don't doubt that what she said is truthful, I also doubt that she's not hiding other stuff. Get a hold of yourself just once, will you? Try to look past the sexually lax morals and do some police work. Ooh. Drama. So you Volition. Say, but give us one example of the scene. Just one example. Yeah, just a proposition. Could the lurid explicitness conceal something less sensational but more illegal? Who is this person who are picking these seditious options? Can't you see the detective grows weary of your malcontent? Are you talking to me? My personhood? Drama? Fuck you! Stop staring at her eyes and say something pertinent to the case. This is making you look like an amateur. Well, I would, but I need some help with my brain. And guess what? You're not helpful, multi-face. It looks like this one's not waking up. You'll have to do it without pushing her further. Yeah. At least for Okay. Me. Let's return to this later then. Oh, I tell you what though. I tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at this window. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to look in her bloody thing. Okay, Ruby was the organiser of the hanging. She's also missing, but the Hardy boys will be tight-lipped about her location. You need to get them to open up. 
Have you fully explored the whirling, analysed the site of the murder, truly and thoroughly interrogated the clergy? All this might make convincing them easier. I've not fully explored the uh, whirling. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Okay, what, what, what happened here? Golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman on the single bed. And what position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Okay, where does it come from? From the roof outside, location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. Okay, so inspect the ghosts and figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Oh, that's kind of sad. And we have a look at point A, the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. Okay, so if he was like directly in the roof, then he either A climbed up, or he used this little door here that we can't get into. So shouldn't there be gun residue outside? There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This right. is more than a week ago. True, you've got a point. I'm, what, 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? 72%. With an antique weapon that fires military-grade ammunition. A Belma grave rifle, for example. This is a good short distance but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. Only one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Okay, could the shot have come from inside the room or close to points? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Okay, are there any arguments against A prime loose? None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. And could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%. Yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin? I don't think that'll place? help, but let's do it. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B Prime. More precisely. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. Okay, the boardwalk? 700 meters away. The likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. Okay, land's end. 1.2 kilometers away. The least likely of these positions. Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it. Possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. Okay, and the islets. One kilometer away point beyond the docks on an islet in the bay. The 
the fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea, as you saw in the coin-operated wheel. Okay. The shop would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window, between Rue de Song Gislen 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets is questionable. Yeah, I don't think any of these are right, but let's ask him his opinion. Do you think the shot could have come from further than the roof in Martinet? From where, precisely? Uh, let's say B prime, the boardwalk, B double prime, lens end, and B triple prime, the islet. I see you have given this a lot of thought. How does the locations you've single out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Much less from the roof, but still. Okay, well, we should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. True, okay. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. A simple hypothesis can be wrong, but it's something to build on. Yep. Okay, I just want to come back out for a second. And let me just have a look at this. Determine where the shot came from. So we need to check for bullet traces. But if they're not here... Oh, sorry. If they're not here, then I don't think they'll be there either. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Oh, that doesn't help me. I wanted to see what percentage it should have been. Never mind. Let's go. And what do I need for this one? Open the door. Look at this, please, please. This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs, plus an old toothbrush, and... Mm. Neither of them are helpful. I just want to try, you know, everything that I can before I talk to her again. But first, let's head back to the boardwalk now. Uh, okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching me play. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing to my channel by pressing the button to the right. And if you fancy anything else watching what I do, then click one of the videos to the left. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!